starting to the top right, we have the Protoss player for Team Axiom Asa. It is Axiom Crank. Crank. What is Crank and nobody will ever know. <laughs> He's up against the Zerg player today, one that he defeated several times in the recent past. Starting to the bottom left for Team Azubu. Azubu Symbol. You know, I actually, uh, I never, I gave a lot of thought to Symbol's ID, and we talked about this a lot in the past, but I never really thought, you know, where does the ID crank come from? I don't think we ever talked about this. Like, he watched the movie and liked it. Yeah, it could be, or maybe he's like, he's like, uh, you know, his team is on a chain, and he's cranking it, reeling it in, like, getting them what they need to do. I don't know. No, 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 dude, he's pulling at Jason's teeth. Definitely. Yeah, to be honest, I never saw Crank, but I... What? I think I was in high school when that came out, and everyone was talking You're about kidding, it. You're kidding, right? Yeah, I never you saw it. You need to watch that movie. If you like action movies, this is one of the most fun ones, just because it's a little bit different. I thought it was a horror movie. It's not, it's not no, a horror movie. No, no. I don't know. Crank sounds scary, so maybe that's... There's several ones of them. You need to watch them. They're really funny. The idea that uh, is behind them is actually uh, quite nice. Like, he has to keep his adrenaline up the entire time. And uh, if not for that, he'll die because he has like a weird poison or drug in his system, and uh, that results in all kinds of fun. So you definitely. So have basically, to watch that. he's just constantly doing crazy stuff. Exactly, and it really works. So the movie is pretty cool. You should definitely check that out. It's absolutely worth it. All right, I, I mean, it's just your, different. All of your movie recommendations you give me so far have been pretty good. So uh, if you I like action you movies here. and you like a few like really interesting or weird ideas, that's the movie to go for. It's of course not really a realistic movie or anything like it. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, like, the older I got, actually, as it turns out, like, the more I liked action movies. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I'm like, not to think anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, nah, I'm tired <laughs> of thinking about those. Like, uh, you know, Inception was great, by the way, but like, you know, sometimes I just want to watch things blow up. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's like, you know, some sort of inner, like, subconscious like anger that I have like after losing so many StarCraft matches that I just want to watch cars explode and people get shot and it's exciting. <laughs> There's a third hatcher here by the way spotted yeah. as well. Just to put that aggression somewhere that you don't start pulling a QXC and suddenly destroy a keyboard. Yeah, I haven't broken any keyboards yet. Um, and I don't want to start now. Although I did spill water on my keyboard, and that's nah. the craziest thing. I, did, I spilled water on my keyboard last night, and I had to pop a key off and clean it. <laughs> that was like my craziest thing. When I lose a game where I like where it's like my own fault, and I really rage about it, I usually throw stuff. That's why I'm really happy that the end of my bad lean thingy is like really sturdy. There are so many bottles that were already thrown against that in rage when I lost like the game like really stupidly, and I didn't see like proxy A happen or whatever, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. And yeah, I'm really happy that that still survived. <laughs> the, the most ragey thing I'll ever do in StarCraft, generally speaking, is like say something mean to my opponent and then like Alt F4. <laughs> He's got two overlords actually coming at the same direction here rather than splitting them off. And uh, he's actually now going to split it a little bit, but the way he sends this is not actually, I guess, the most normal way. Uh, he gets a good view of what's going on on the other hand. And so far, sees there's no third gas. No, you know, like some people really in, uh, insult their opponents or go, go like for these mom jokes. And like one of the best ones that I actually heard when I was playing a little bit of Diablo 3 just recently was like, if you insult someone, you go just like, your, your mom pukes zombies in Act 1. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was yeah, yeah. I it had me in tears. Like I did so not see that the one coming and then suddenly when I read it I was like, Oh my god, this the, is brilliant. What's the, the technical term for that that uh boss is like the witch witch mother, is that what it's called? Something like that? Wretched mother. Wretched yeah. mother, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, your mom pukes zombies <laughs> in act one. <laughs> That's good actually. I'm I you know, you know you Diablo actually expansion have comes out, I'm gonna have to do You that. have to use that in real life and then look at the confused expression on the other guy's face like what? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else, all the nerds around you're like uh. <laughs> Like that one took me a second to get, but as soon as as soon as I thought about it, it was very clever. Uh, I love it. This but pressure here, by the way, could do a little bit of damage. There's plenty of Zerglings to defend, on the other hand. Yep. And they should buy enough time. Uh, Actually, yeah, he's got way too many Zerglings here. He needs to be careful. I mean, the Zealot already getting surrounded here. And now with the lair take started, you can already see that speed was skipped so far. So he invests the first 100 gas that he has right into the tech. But the Zealot already going down, and that's very annoying for him right now. He needs to be careful with the Stalker so that he doesn't lose that either. Whoa, with that's a fast third Nexus. 
That's that 720 third nexus that we sometimes see if the Protoss player really decides to go into a more gateway heavy army at the beginning of the match. Usually you see that with a few more sentries on the other hand, but he goes into double Stargate oh behind God. this. Oh okay, wow. so we're going to see um, not Alicia here, but actually Crank uh, go for Void Rays heavily, yep. it looks like. Um, he probably trained with Alicia. Yeah, he probably did. I mean, they are in fact on the same uh, team, so... Yeah, I, I think this is actually a really creative style. If it's not scouted, it can definitely easily work. I mean, the thing is, Symbol is not... The Symbol is the type of player who will never just make, like, 20 links and try to force a cancel. He'll just take a fourth base, as you can see here. So in the rare case that Symbol does do, like, a Hydra Roach timing, if you have enough gateways and you've got the Void Rays out to kind of buffer, you're going to be in a good spot. And with the Infestation Pit going down here, I think we might actually see a commitment to Swarm Hosts. What I really like in this game is that both of them are playing it a little bit more passive, which leads us just into a very strong uh, late mid game and also, of course, end game. Because right now we have that third base for the Protoss player, and Symbol couldn't really contest that. Crank already identified that Symbol was trying to play this a little bit more economy base and then took this early third. And upon Symbol realizing it, he went into a fourth on his own. So both of these players really just trying to skip the early game here. Yeah. But we hit a double Phoenix before Void Rays, and that's actually going to allow him to clean up Overlords on the map and give him a little bit of scouting information, so that's kind of cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Did he actually cancel them? No, he didn't. Okay, so there they are. So he can actually kind of go around and be annoying with those. Yeah, and with the double Phoenix, you know, there's, uh, now he knows that there's a double Stargate, all right. So now he has the vision that he needs, but the Void reproduction has already begun. And that kind of ensures that even if there is some kind of Roach commitment by Symbol, those two Void Rays would shut down that very, very quickly. Yeah. But Symbol already in a position where he now tries to go into Hive Tech, and the Hive Tech, of course, for the Vipers here that he can then use. And uh, he also goes into his Hydra list, so they will help a little bit against those Phoenixes initially. And, and as you can see, there's not a massive commitment to them. Yeah, and the, the Infestors are actually going to come out instead yeah. of Stormos, which is a smart choice now that you've seen the double Stargate, because that's going to be great against Void Rays. Infestors are basically the best thing that you've got against Void Rays. It's not Corruptors, as you might think, but Infestors with Fungals and Infested Terrans can be really good against that. Yeah, depending on the numbers and what else the Protoss player has, Mutalist can also be a good yeah, choice, that's but true. you need to have a really good economy behind it to really support that. And you might think like Hydras are pretty good, but they're actually like only okay against Void Rays, depending on the situation. The with problem the with the fields. Hydra list is that usually when you have already a really huge number of Void Rays, you have a bit of crown support as well, and that will either be a, a Colossi, that could also be a Templars with Storm, or just simply zealots with charge and whatever you have like your hydra lists will be really hard pressed to make something happen yeah they can't really close the distance even yeah. when they have so much range one of the things that you see quite often against it is hydras and queens that actually works quite well together since the queens can take a lot of damage and then go for the transfuse whereas the hydra lists try to dish out the dps that's kind of really important if you want to make that work and Crank with the three base that he has is already adding the uh, extra attack that we just talked about. He has no upgrades whatsoever just now, but he's going straight into the Templar Archive and that will allow him to feed back Vipers, to go into Storm against Hydralisks. So he has a lot of options here. Yeah, Adrenal Glance coming out as well here, so his Zerlings are going to be all the more effective. And the Void Ray count is getting pretty, pretty dangerous here. Um, and he's actually been allowed to have that fourth base for... a uh, symbol that has had that fourth base for a really long time, so... I don't think he's actually going to commit here. He just wants to make sure there's no fourth base to the north. He's going to check for that, and he's going to pressure a little yeah. bit. Here comes a charge upgrade on those zealots that I was talking about earlier. That can really help you if you want to uh, do something against the Hydra list and put pressure on them. The interesting thing is that we have two banelings here already, and if he gets a few more than that, he can actually just move those banelings into the zealots if he has a good opportunity to do so, and then make sure that this kind of meat shield that you have at the front that is uh, supposed to pressure your Hydra list is going down really quickly. And there we have the nine additional ones and even a few roaches to tank more damage. So that's going to be a really interesting push that the symbol is currently executing. Yeah, here. this is looking really scary. The army supply is almost dead. Even this hatchery will have to be cancelled. Um, but how many borders do we have? I think we have like 10 or so. And Storm is not complete yet. He doesn't, as far as I know, have any Templar either. So the Templar for the feedback is not here yet. Well, here we go. Symbol is about to move in here. The Void Renama is currently at 8. We have a few of the Roaches at the top already trying to bust their way through the small wall that we have there. And the Zealot is already gone. The rest of the army for Crank currently just waiting there, trying to get a good engagement. But at the same time, he's disposing his wall. This the Cybernetic Score that could be sniped and also that Forge. Yep. Templar Archives will finish Storm, though there's no way you can snipe that. And here we go. The Storms are ready, and they do hit quite a few Hydras. The Banelings go down as well. 
Fungals are decent, but I'm not sure if they're good enough. The Hydras, on the other hand, a great concave. Is there enough DPS here? That's the question. The charge dots are already gone. Those Void Rays are going to town, taking down everything that the Zerg player has, and immediately Symbol is retreating here. His Bailings didn't do as much as he hoped for, but they killed most of the Zealots already. The Hydralists, on the other hand, just can't deal with the Void Rays at this point in time. Yeah, but he's remaxing so quickly. 14 more Roaches, 11 more Hydras. He's yeah. unpowered the Stargates. He's actually traded really well here. He actually killed several of the Void Rays, killed all the Templar. The only thing that he didn't take down was the Cybernetics Core. That would have really helped him. He focused on the Forge first, didn't take down the Cybernetics Core. And at this point, Symbol really trusts trying to max out his army size. Once again, go for that fifth base that he wants to establish, taking down the Zealots that are sent over by Crank. And the Protoss player is in a little bit of trouble here. He wants to just solidify his position even more, getting those Voidra numbers into the game and adding the extra tech with the Colossi that he wants to add in his composition. Yeah, this is looking really good uh, so far for Symbol because He's had this third base really uncontested, or fourth I should say. The fifth is going to complete now. And he's just got the, the better traits every single time. He's denied a fourth. And this Zealot run by, uh, you know, if he sees it, he should be able to deal with it relatively easily. And there's just no Colossi. The Hydra's numbers are so, so high. Only three spine crawlers here with Transfuse. Maybe in these roaches he holds, it looks like he probably will. Yeah, he has everything that he needs here. Another run by, on the other hand, at the bottom left at that four, uh, fifth base. Here come those Banelings, still waiting, trying to wait for the Zealots that just might rush down that ramp. And here come, on the other hand, the High Templars trying to go for the Storms. And they could be devastating in this, this many low hit point units. The feedback's going down against the Infestors. The wall already been taken down by Symbol. Here come the Zealots moving in. And Symbol on the other hand is trying to end it now, moving into the Storms. The Storms are really good here. The Banelings do connect a few of those Templar. And the Void Ray is fumbled. Perfect chain funnel here on every single Void Ray. He needs to get one more, but he doesn't have enough energy. And the Zealots actually will clean up house on the ground. The Archon finishes as well. And Symbol will lose that fifth base to the south. He could take down a lot of the Void Rays on the other hand. That fungal was worth so much for him. He made sure that only one Void Ray could attack while those uh, Hydralis approach from the perfect angle. Now the Cybernetics Core is taken out at the top of that ramp as well. Symbol doing a really good job here so far, but Crank is still holding. Crank is basically, uh, you know, doing the opposite of what you would normally do as a Protoss. Is he's he's basically taken a, a few core units like the Void Rays, kept them alive, and he's using mostly Zealots to actually clean up the actual army on the ground. Yes, he does have a few Templar. The storms are decent. He's killing the vo uh, the Banelings, but he's he's eliminating the Hydras over and over again and stabilizing each time. The big problem, of course, is where's the fourth? There's no fourth base in sight, and with no map control, how is he ever going to take one? He's long distance mining, in fact, right now. Yeah, and Symbol is switching gears a little bit. Crank is trying to go into a Colossi and is not focusing this much on the Void Race anymore. And Symbol is using that to just go for a more roach-heavy army instead of just mixing in this many Hydralists the entire time. He knows that he has only to deal with a few Void Rays at this point, only three of them yeah. remaining. So a much more roach-heavy composition. That tech switch is really going to do numbers on Crank if he doesn't get good feedbacks off against the Vipers. Yeah, and even uh, if you get full storms on roaches, storm is it's decent against roaches, but it's not as good as using its hydras. The roaches just have so many hit points. Great observer there, by the way. Yeah. Really in the best spot. He needs to get the observer. He needs to have the vision so he can get the feedback in. If the Vipers are able to get their yanks, that would be horrible for Crank. He can't lose those Colossi. And you know, a lot of people might be wondering why there's no Banelings speed. The thing is, those Banelings just need to be at the front to tank any Zealots that try to charge and He doesn't need them to be at the front to charge. And uh-oh! Great pulls on the Void Ray as well as the Colossus. Fungal goes down as well. Another yank. Double yank here. Beautiful yanks. And Crank is in trouble. He doesn't have any more AoE. He doesn't have any more Storm. The last Colossus will fall. And GG. GG and game.